So the direction of the arrows, how we represent the direction of an arrow, carbon bonded with hydrogen, and then a chlorine is there. So chlorine is more electronegative, so there will be partial negative and hydrocarbon will be partial positive. Now, if we have, like example, OH is there with a negative charge and it also have a lone pair. So the direction of the arrow is always from the electron rich side to the electron deficient side. Like we know OH is attacking on the OH is negative and it has a lone pair, so definitely it will attack on the partial positive. So this is a nucleophile. Now where I should draw an arrow, like what should be the direction of arrow? So the direction of the arrow is always from the electron rich side to the electron deficient side. So if I draw an arrow like this, is it correct? The direction of the arrow is always from the electron rich to the electron deficient side. Is this an this arrow is correct? Yes or no? So this arrow is not correct. Why it's not correct? Because I drew an arrow from electron deficient to the electron rich side. So it should be other way around. So when I will draw an arrow to show the representation, so I will draw from electron rich because this is mo having more electron or negative charge and this is electron deficient. So the direction of the arrow is always from electron rich to the electron deficient side. Same way if I say a carbon and a chlorine the carbon and the chlorine are breaking the bond like the movement of electron. So how the electron will move? Should I draw like this or I draw like that? A or B which is the right way to represent? Like if I say the carbon and the chlorine bond is breaking down. It's a, so and the chlorine is taking both of the electrons. So how I should draw an electron like this or the other way around? A or B? A or B? Because elect, how electrons start and how electrons end, that is the important thing. from where the electron start and where the electron end. So where, because when a carbon and the chlorine bond will break, the electron are between the carbon and chlorine. And in end at chlorine, so it means chlorine will take those electron. So which is the right way to represent the arrow for A is correct. B is not correct. B means chlorine give electron in this region and the carbon is taking those electrons. So when you represent like it's a heterolytic bond breaking, there's a bond between the carbon and the chlorine. So what actually happened when the bond break, heterolytic bond break, so these two electrons are taken by the chlorine. So that's why when I draw an arrow, I will draw an arrow that where the electrons start and where the electron end. So it end, so this will get a plus charge and this chlorine will get a negative charge. So this is the right way of representing. If I draw other way around, like if I drew like this, it means the electron are transferred from chlorine to this region. So where the electron start and where the electron end, that is what we do. Same thing where here also electron rich side, where the electron start and where the electron end, that we do. Is it uh, clear? The direction of the arrow? But the chlorine is more electron rich than the two pair. Chlorine is more electron, that is chlorine is pulling those electron. So chlorine is more electronegative that we can say, but we cannot say chlorine is more electron rich. In terms of the pair of electron, the chlorine is pulling those electron. So it's always, when we show an arrow, we show the electron pair where it start and where it finish. That is how we represent. So if it's a bond breaking, If it's a bond breaking, we draw an arrow from the bond as the chlorine is partial negative and carbon is partial positive. This 
two electrons, chlorine is taking those electrons. That's why we represent that this will become C plus and this will become Cl minus. We draw an arrow from the bond till the electron, the atom which is pulling those electrons. Where the electron starts, where the electron start, electron start here and electron end here. Same thing when OH was attacking, OH is having a lone pair and a negative charge. So these electrons start here and it ends with carbon. So that's how we draw an arrow from where it start and here it end. Is it uh, clear? The direction of an arrow? Any doubt in this? You can also learn in terms of electron rich and deficient, but for that simple rule is where the electron start and where it ends, that, that's how we represent an arrow. For example, if I say carbon, carbon double bond is there and there's a hydrogen which is partial positive and I do an arrow like this. Is it correct? Right or wrong? Is this right, the arrow? Is it correct? Hydrogen is, hydrogen is what? A hydrogen is electrophile. Hydrogen electrophile is attracted towards electron rich side. This is not the right arrow. What I should do because where the electrons start, the electrons start like these are the two electrons of the carbon it and it will try to form a bond with hydrogen. So electrons are starting here and electrons end here with hydrogen like they will form a bond with hydrogen. So I should draw an arrow from the electron rich to the electron deficient here. What is this a nucleophile? Because, no, it's not a nucleophile. It is electrophile. Why it's an electrophile? Why it is an electrophile? Because it is attracted towards the electron rich side. This species is an electrophile. Because it is attracted towards the electron rich side or it is a partial positive or a positive. So how to know electrophile? Look, a simple rule to know the electrophile. If it's an electrophile, it might have either a partial positive or a positive. If it's a nucleophile, it will have a lone pair or a negative charge or both. May have a lone pair, may have a negative charge or maybe both. But if it's an electrophile, it might be partial positive and partial negative or a full, uh, sorry, partial positive or a full positive. It will be electrophile. Can it have a partial negative for a nucleophile? Yes, nucleophile can have a partial negative, but usually it does not happen. The reason is that because it's more electronegative. So instead of being partial negative, it take, pull that electron. So it will become complete negative rather than partial negative. So practically it does not happen to be a partial negative as a nucleophile. Then there are different types of, is it clear, the concept of electrophile, nucleophile and drawing the arrows? Still we are introduction of the organic chemistry. Then you should know the types of the reactions. We have different types of reaction. We have addition in our organic chemistry. We have addition. We have substitution. We have elimination. We have hydrolysis. These are the reactions in organic chemistry. We have condensation. We have oxidation, which is the most common type of reaction, and the reduction. These are the types. And the mechanism can be 
The mechanism is of three types. It might be a radical. It might be a electrophile or electrophilic. It might be a nucleophilic. So when we have organic chemistry, organic chemistry, we have mechanism. Mechanism means how the reaction proceed. The reaction might start with a radical. So we call a radical, a free radical reaction. A reaction might start with an electrophile, means either a partial positive or a positive. We call that as electrophilic reaction. And it might start with a nucleophile. Nucleophile means like it has even a lone pair or a negative charge. So if the reaction starts with a nucleophile, we call it nucleophilic. These are mechanism. Electrophilic, nucleophilic, and radical are the mechanism. The type of a reaction, like we may have addition, substitution, elimination, hydrolysis, condensation, oxidation, or reduction. So how we know, what is the meaning of the term addition reaction? Addition reaction means when we have multiple reactants and it give only one product. When you have more reactant and you get only one product, what we call this type of a reaction, we call them as addition reaction. Usually it happen in a carbon-carbon double bond or carbon bo double bonded with oxygen. We might have a substitution reaction. What is the meaning of substitution reaction? The term substitution reaction means when atom or the group of atom replaces another atom or the group, we call substitution. We might have elimination reaction. Elimination reaction means when it's a removal of atom from the neighboring carbon, like, and it result in a formation of a double bond. Like, addition means, so you was having C2H4 and it reacted with hydrogen, it will become C2H6. What is this reaction? Addition. Why addition? You have only one product. Substitution means, like example, you have CH4. It reacted with chlorine. One chlorine take position of a hydrogen and one hydrogen take position of the chlorine. So the two atoms changes the places of each other. We call it substitution. Elimination means when the adjacent carbon lose their atoms and form a double bond, like example, When the adjacent carbon, like these are the adjacent carbon, they lose their atom. This atom is lost and this atom is lost. So as a result, what will happen? The carbon-carbon double bond will be there. And two hydrogens are being removed, so it will become H2. So when adjacent carbon atoms loses their neighbor, like the removal of atom from the two neighboring carbon, what we call, and they join with each other and form a double bond, so we call that as elimination reaction. Hydrolysis means whenever we have one of the reactant is water, we call hydrolysis. It can be acid hydrolysis or a base hydrolysis. But how to know it's a hydrolysis reaction when we break down the molecule by the help of water. Like, say we have, uh, say ester is there plus water, it will give carboxylic acid plus alcohol. So when ester is reacting with water, because water is one of the reactant, whenever water is one of the reactant, it causes the breakdown of a molecule by the action or the help of a water, we call them as hydrolysis. Then condensation means it's opposite of a hydrolysis when water is formed as a product, when water is formed as a product, like example, if I write a reverse reaction, if it's a carboxylic acid plus alcohol, and it will give ester plus water. So what we call when a small molecule, a water molecule is produced, we call that as a condensation. And oxidation means addition of oxygen to the molecule is called oxidation and removal of oxygen from the molecule is called reduction. So these are different types of reactions throughout the course. We'll discuss them. This is just introduction. Any doubt till this point?